Today we've got a great malicious compliance story all about a ladder. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, doesn't matter if the case is closed or not? Okay then. I work in a call center that primarily deals with the public, with issues or queries they have, and whilst we can deal with a lot ourselves, there are a lot of things that we must either log for another department to look into or transfer them across to that department. For example, if someone calls about a broken street lamp, they get transferred across to the street lighting team, but if someone calls about a pothole, we have to log it for the highway team to fix it. Some departments don't have an internal number for the caller to get transferred across to or a number we can call to speak to that department. And one of those departments is the enforcement department. Of all the systems and departments we use and liaise with, the trickiest one we deal with is the enforcement system. Basically ranging from food safety to the environment, there were multiple teams that enforced things and all these issues had to be logged on this system. For example, if someone called to report their neighbor for being too loud, that had to get logged on the system for the noise enforcement team to investigate, but we had to arrange for letters to be sent out about it. If someone reported an abandoned car, we logged it and the environment enforcement team went out to investigate. If someone said they got food poisoning from a restaurant, we logged it and the food safety team investigated it and so on. The reason why it was so tricky was because if you missed a step, it didn't get logged properly or it didn't go to the correct team, which meant that someone would complain to your manager about it and, crucially, this was a legal system, which meant that if the issue escalated to court, whatever you wrote in your notes could be used in the court proceedings. This wasn't a second nature, eyes closed kind of system. You needed to be concentrating because something you log can bite you in the butt a month later. For example, when someone calls to say they haven't received a letter, and it turns out you didn't send it in the first place. The way it worked was that a case was logged, which meant that it was open, and it got assigned to an officer like pulling a name out of a hat. And throughout the time that it was open, if someone called back to give you more information about the case, you could update it. And that update went directly to the investigating officer. And then when the investigation had finished, the case was closed by that officer. Basically, once a case was assigned to an officer, they had to see it through from start to finish. Whether it was deciding if a noise complaint was justified or going through black bags that were reported as fly tipping to see if they could find anything that tied someone to that rubbish and so on. It wasn't as simple as that though, because there were cases that had been open for years with multiple updates. There were multiple cases that had been opened and closed between the same properties for the same reasons, or someone had called about something and you weren't 100% sure if it should be logged or not, etc. I'm not sure how my colleagues dealt with those situations, but whenever I got a call like that, I just emailed the investigating officer just to explain the situation and ask for advice, and CC'd in their colleagues just in case the investigating officer was off or I just emailed the team to ask if they wanted me to log it as a new case or not, since if it was ongoing situation, with multiple cases for the same thing, many officers may have dealt with it, and they may not have wanted me to log it as a new case. I didn't see an issue with it because they either emailed me back with an answer, or they didn't reply but logged it themselves after they'd looked into it. But one day, I got a thorny email from a thornier senior environmental officer, basically telling me off and telling me not to send them emails anymore because the system was there to be used. I emailed him back explaining that it wasn't that simple because there were tricky cases that I needed help with, and I didn't want to update an old case or log a case if I didn't need to, to not unnecessarily add to the caseloads of the officers. And he replied back reiterating that I shouldn't send any more emails and finished it off by telling me to either update the case, whether it was open or closed, or open a new case. Cue malicious compliance. From that day forward, I did not send another email. If I got a call about an issue, and the last time the issue was raised was in 2017, I updated the 2017 case. If I was on the fence about logging something as a new case or not, I just logged it anyway. If I checked the last case and the investigating officer had left, I updated it anyway. I was unaware of this, but when I told people that the investigating officer would call them back, 
like they typically did after we asked them to in our updates, they would call us a couple of weeks later to ask why they hadn't received a call, and my colleagues would have to raise a new case for them because the one I updated was closed. The officers also suddenly had an influx of new cases, because every time I updated a closed case it reopened, which added to their caseload. The system they used worked on dates and caseloads. For example, if I asked them to call someone or inspect a property in my update, the system generated a time frame for them to complete that action by. But if they were too busy to do something I'd asked them to do, it went red, which counted against them. Also, for example, if they had four open cases and then they closed three and they'd gone down to one, they'd go back up to four again if I updated three of their old cases. So, based on the system, they were not doing their jobs properly because they constantly had open cases. This put their stats through the floor. This went on for ages. And one day, I was hauled into an office by my manager, and waiting for me was his manager. The senior enforcement officer, his manager, a HR advisor for me, and HR. They told me that I was doing call avoidance, gross misconduct purposely misadvising callers and not triaging calls correctly. From what they were saying and the paperwork they had with them, I knew it was a you're fired meeting. HR asked me if there was anything I wanted to say, so I looked at the enforcement manager, pointed at the senior enforcement officer and said, he told me to do it. The enforcement manager looked at me, looked at the senior enforcement manager, looked at me again, and then asked me to clarify what I meant. I explained it all from start to finish, making it clear that when I was sending emails, I always asked for advice and offered to log a case for the enforcement team if they wanted me to, and that before the email from the senior enforcement officer, my emails either were not replied to, but someone logged it for me, or someone replied to me to tell me to log a new case or to not log a new case. The enforcement manager sighed and then asked me if I could send him that email, so I quickly left, went back to my desk, sent the email thread to him and came back into the office. He read the email, sighed deeper than he did before, and then asked us all to leave but asked the senior enforcement officer to stay. And I left with a massive poop-eating grin on my face because I knew that I would keep my job. The fallout was pretty big because the IT team had to go in and manually close all the open cases so that the stats for the enforcement officers would go back to normal. The payroll department had to backdate all the months that the stats were messed up so that the performance bonus matched what would have happened had I not put their stats down. I didn't know they had performance bonuses until afterwards. And the senior enforcement officer got demoted to an enforcement officer based on their new email signature. A couple of weeks later, when the enforcement manager was less busy, he emailed me to basically say that he gives me permission to go back to emailing the enforcement team about cases. But I should use my own judgment. If I think I could justifiably get away with not logging something on the system, as in I could explain to my manager why I didn't think it should have been logged, then I shouldn't log it. And that logic would cut down the amount of emails I had to send to the enforcement teams. No one got fired, but someone did get demoted, and a lot of work happened in the background to fix what I did. You gotta love that here was OP reaching out to everybody asking for clarification and assistance to uh, essentially streamline this whole process. They got very minimal feedback to make life way easier for those people, and then just got told off for it. You gotta love watching that senior enforcement officer get egg on his face after he gets reprimanded. Finally, somebody high up enough at this company realizes, yeah, let's streamline this system and make it work well. Our next story is, don't bite the hand that helps. A few months ago, I posted a few stories about experiences at a retirement home. That got me remembering other good, bad, and amusing times from that job, including this story. I hadn't been with that company a year even, and I was given a promotion to food handler and receiver. The company was so new at this time that construction was still ongoing and we were far from the amount of busy we would be in later years. Due to that, and that I was not yet trained to place orders in addition to receiving them, I had the occasional weekday off. 
On one of these days, I woke up and realized there was literally nothing that needed to be done around the house. No laundry, no dishes, no yard stuff, not even any away from home errands. So I decided to crack a few drinks in the AM and watch some movies. Early 20s, what can I say? Turned out, one of the food items I'd put way earlier that week wasn't for the residents of the home, but for a big executive dining slash meeting. The head chef, different from one in another story, but still a ding dong in his own right, couldn't find the item, so he called me at home to ask about it. Annoying, but not a big deal. I'm not the best at describing where a thing is if I'm not physically there, but I was trying to remember. To this day, I don't remember what the fancy food item was, only that it needed to be refrigerated. So while trying to describe to the chef exactly where the item was in the walk-in refrigerator, I must have been slurring a bit, because he asked me if I'd been drinking. I told him yes. He then proceeded to give this pompous lecture on how dare I, it was too early, am I an alcoholic, etc. To which my response was, I'm over 21, it's my day off, freak you. And then I hung up. I knew right away that this wasn't really professional, and sure enough, the next shift, there was a summons for me to go to human resources. I told them that I agreed me cussing out chef was unprofessional. Then I heard the narrative chef was giving was that he called me to ask about item, at which point I cussed him and hung up. I put my phone on the HR desk and told them to feel free to check the length of the call, since it lasted nearly 5 minutes way longer than a call, cuss, and hang up. I also told him that I only cussed out Chef when he felt it was his place to lecture me on how I legally spent my day off. As an additional shot, I told HR worker to feel free to check the company's own phone records to see who called who, when, and for how long. In the end, I had to sit through a mini lecture of common courtesy. My final responses were that if Chef was a real professional, he would have made his job to know where that item was as soon as it came in, or at least tell me, when X shows up, let me know. And then to let them know that to avoid this in the future, I would not take any more calls from work on a day off. I don't think OP really drilled into HR how over the line this coworker was. Like, yeah, it's not okay that OP went and cussed them out while they were talking business or whatever. But this dude outright insulted OP and called them an alcoholic essentially to their face over the phone. What is the logical response there, HR? In my opinion, it's thanks for your concern, get bent, click. Guess I'm getting a mini lecture too though. Our next story is, boss won't replace light bulbs. Many moons ago, I worked for someone selling books online. He bought high-end computers but was notoriously cheap in other areas. For instance, all of the fire extinguishers were out of date and we had two portable heaters for the whole building, no central heating. One day he stopped replacing the light bulbs. This included the book room which has one small blacked out window. One by one the lights went until I literally couldn't see anymore. His solution was to buy me a wind up torch. Well, this torch was loud and annoying when wound up. Every time when he came into work and I needed to go into that room, I would spend a few minutes winding up that torch. He tried to ask me to stop, but I'd point out that all he had to do was buy some light bulbs. Eventually he gave in, but not before I annoyed the heck out of him every time he set foot in the office. Because I'd always find myself a task that meant I needed to go in there. How much do you want to bet that this guy's ploy was actually that he was so cheap that they were going to make it so miserable for anybody else there that when it comes to something as menial as a new light bulb, somebody working for them would just donate one. I bet that's what they were banking on. Our next story is Ladder. Used to be a truck driver and had a ladder on the back of the cab mounted with bungee cords for easy removal for when I needed it. Had some days off, someone else drove the truck and damaged the ladder. I go into the office asking for a new ladder. Why? Well, it's damaged, it's bent, and doesn't seem safe. Sorry, you don't get a new one. When would I get a new one if you don't have one? I don't care if you throw it in a ditch, but as long as you have one, you don't get another one. Next day, I go ask for a ladder. You were just in here yesterday, I told you. You told me that if I didn't have one, I would get a new one. They say, what? Where is it? I say, in a ditch. 
remember you said so and so, got myself a new ladder, and never had problems again, if I needed some kind of tool. I mean, yeah, I don't know if that kind of company is resourceful enough to deal with stuff like that, but, I mean, you could recycle the ladder and get maybe a buck or two for it. They could have saved some money, maybe. Especially if they just have, like, a wealth of tools to hand out in exchange. But, with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.